Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. In today's animal painting tutorial for stress relief, I'm going to be showing you in time-lapse form how I painted this Samoyed pup. If you would like to paint this in real time, I have the links down below. But I'm going to be talking to you about how to get past some really frustrating paintings that you're stuck on. All right, so let's jump in and get painting. Now, before I talk about the five things that I do to push through these kinds of paintings, I want to talk about three key points, three things to hold on to in the back of your mind when you are experiencing this frustration. First point is it's all right to feel frustrated. It's a very normal emotion, whether you're a beginner artist or highly advanced, to get angry or frustrated or annoyed by a, a painting that you're stuck on. That's all right, but it should stop there. Never let your emotions lead you to being nasty to yourself or others or just going down this cascade of negative thoughts that makes this whole experience negative. Every painting should teach us something new, so you can't expect to grow as an artist without going through some discomfort and some challenge. Let that frustration be your pause button, your pause button that pushes you to start problem solving. Even if it takes you a couple hours, a couple days, or a couple weeks, that has no reflection on you as an artist. It's just a very humbling experience that shows us where we need to improve. And that leads me to my next point. You will reap what you sow if you are constantly sowing time and effort into your paintings, even though you don't see improvements, you will eventually see improvements. I promise you this. If you're working and working and trying and trying at the right techniques and being intentional about your growth, you will see improvements. Take an inventor, for example. Their whole career is based on failure. They have to learn to embrace that failure because it just guides them to, the, to solving the problem, to inventing what they're trying to invent. And we have to kind of feel like inventors here. We're creating our own unique paintings, our own unique invention. But I guess they don't see their mistakes as failures. They just see it as a step forward. And that's kind of how we should perceive our frustrations. If we feel stuck, it's actually just guiding us to the next step forward. The third thing to remember when you're stuck on a painting is just that perseverance builds confidence. When I was randomly asked to paint my first mural and it was a restaurant mural for a very fancy fine dining restaurant, I was petrified. But I knew if I said no, it would just close the doors to some awesome future opportunities. And so I knew I had to do it. So but I was terrified, but I persevered. Now that perseverance grew my confidence so much that I continue to paint restaurant murals, outdoor murals, large murals, small murals. But I would have never built that confidence if I didn't persevere through that first mural. I didn't even know what I was capable of until I was put under pressure to actually do it. Pressure and frustration and anger can be great things, guys. It can be the stepping stone. It can lead us to problem solve. It can lead us to seeing what we're really capable of. So as I'm painting the Samoyed Pup, here is where I got very frustrated. I wanted to make a winter scarf where it has the black and red, and I messed up the stripes. And painting red over top black is very difficult so I knew I had to start fresh I had to start all over with this scarf I was really disappointed and very frustrated because I had this whole idea this whole plan in my mind for this pet portrait but to not let my frustration get the best of me here's what I did first I paused and realized that I don't want to keep working that especially while it's wet it's acrylic so I want to let that dry and I'll go back to it so I moved on to another area in the pet portrait. I moved on to my dark tones, but that's when I realized I couldn't move forward in my dark tones around the neck until I had my scarf finished. So if I couldn't work on other parts of the pet portrait, I just paused again and I went on Pinterest and online to get inspiration for what I could put on this bandana instead of 
repainting or retrying to paint that black and red pattern. Being summertime, I was inspired by different things like cactuses and succulents, so I decided I wanted to somehow put in cactuses on this bandana. So I knew I was gonna add green, so I needed to kind of walk through how I was gonna add this in color on the bandana. So I thought of the complementary color of blue, my background, which is orange. So I then decided I wanted a pinkish orange because I wanted some reds in here. I always wanted some reds. So a pinkish orange for my base, and then I would keep the border of this scarf, of this bandana, and then add in little green cactuses. Now, I knew in my mind that even if I messed up again, I could always repaint it over top. I stuck with it and I persevered and I ended up liking this cactus bandana a thousand times more than the original idea I had. So just to review how I work through frustration is one, I first pause. Before I do anything else, I pause and I think about how what I can do next. Step two, I redirect my mind and my attention on another area of the pet portrait that I can work on that will help me just refocus on the painting. Step three, if I get caught up, maybe I can't move forward because, for instance, the bandana needed to be completed before I could put fur over top, then I get creative. I stop again and I look at other areas that I can draw inspiration from. So in this case, I went to Pinterest and I was inspired by all these beautiful succulents and cactuses. Step four, I make a decision. Even if it's not the final decision that I stick with, it's at least a de decision that will help push me forward. Making a decision is better than no decision, and so I go for it. Even if I feel a little nervous, I still give it a try. Step number five is the most important. I keep an open mind. So I'm open to make mistakes, I'm open to trying new patterns, colors, and techniques, and I'm open to doing something that might take a little longer, maybe it'll take a little less time, but whatever happens, I'm gonna let it happen. I'm gonna allow myself to create what just comes out from my heart and onto my canvas. I think something that has really helped me become a better artist is just being able to let go. So when I have ideas in my mind that I want to happen, that I, I a certain way that I want it to look on my canvas, when I let go of that and I just allow things to kind of just come and be and just to uh, pour out from my heart and soul onto my canvas, that's really when I grow the most as an artist. And, and not only that, but it's just more enjoyable. So step number five, practice letting go of control. Just let what happens happen. You're allowed to reattempt certain areas of the painting. You're allowed to keep trying and reworking. But sometimes in the process of letting go, you start to like things that maybe you never thought you would like before. Being a little bit more loose with your brush strokes or trying new colors and techniques and like what I'm saying, it might actually be something different that you learn to like and embrace and then apply to the next painting. Also, I've noticed that when I'm more relaxed, when I'm more content, I seem to paint better. I seem to make better decisions and I seem to just have it flow more easily out of me onto my canvas. So something I hear from artists quite often is that that inner critic is what helps drive them to being better. Well, in my personal experience, I find that to be wrong, just so incorrect because when I'm being highly critical, I'm adding more tension on myself, I'm putting myself under all this pressure and it prevents me from making wise decisions in my paintings. It, it makes it not only so much less enjoyable, but I'm, I'm not even holding on to any of the things I'm learning. I'm, I'm forgetting all the things I'm learning because I'm in this state of negativity. So in letting go of that inner critic, you're actually going to grow faster and you're going to make less mistakes. So guys, as I finish up this Samoyed painting, I hope this has blessed you and helped you just to look at your paintings in a different way, especially ones you're stuck on. And I actually have summarized this whole 
video basically what I've gone over in a blog post down below if you just want to look over that. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye.